Are seed oils good for you or bad for you? Hey, Sophie here. So I was out for dinner about a month ago with some friends, a couple, my husband and I with another couple. And we ordered, we, the menus came and we were about to order. And my friend, who's a very intelligent woman, said to the server, I need to know if there's any seed oil in any of these foods. And it was a really healthy, you know, plant-based restaurant. And um, the server said, oh no, we don't use any seed oils. And I thought, okay, this is an interesting conversation. So that was that. And I have had many of you asking me about seed oils. I just haven't got round to, to making a video on it. And I think it's really important that we do understand whether seed oils are as, as, as uh, awful as they've been made out to be. You know, you've probably seen it, you've heard it, unless you're living under a rock on Instagram, TikTok, podcasts, you know, all the places that we get our information and our often a misinformation, I'm sure that you have heard. And, and seed oils, you know, have been given, it's viral, all these videos have gone right, viral. They've been given a really, really bad rap. So over the last year or so, I've dug in, as I always do, as a board certified nutritionist, my responsibility to really dig in to the science and not just, you know, believe, a lot of it is this anecdotal, oh, I gave up seed oils and I, feel so much better, there's a reason why, and I'll get to that at the end of this video, okay? But first, I just want to dig into and give you the, the cliff notes, as it were, and I'm gonna try and make this as simple as possible for you to understand, only because I need, to, need it to be really simple for myself to understand. So first off, off, what are seed oils? Well, obviously, it's an oil that's pressed from a seed. That's it. Now. Uh, they're known as PUFAs, which are polyunsaturated fatty acids, okay? Now, there are many different seeds that uh, are used to extract the oil out of. Now, what is the problem with these seed oils? What is it that is in these seed oils that is supposedly this, this component that causes supposedly inflammation because i think that's the biggest thing that people are afraid of right they are inflammatory seed oils are inflammatory but are they so when we look at the different seeds okay we want to look at the it's interesting to me anyway to look at the content of the omega-6 fatty acids because omega-6s are basically the thought to be the sort of pro-inflammatory essential fatty acid and omega-3s are thought to be the anti-inflammatory essential fatty acid okay so we've got our omega-6s supposedly pro-inflammatory and our omega-3s anti-inflammatory now let me be clear we need both we need our sixes and we need our threes. And we need to get them from our diet, they're called essential fatty acids, because we cannot make them in our body. We need both. So ideally, we wanna get our omega-6s and our omega-3s from really healthy sources, which for the most part, for both sixes and threes, are going to be nuts, and seeds and there are some other foods and there are some other supplements as well but for the most part whether it is in the case of omega-6s it could be walnuts it could be almonds it could be chia seeds so there's lots of really great whole food sources where we can get these omega-6s hemp seeds is another one and then most of you have heard of where you can get your omega-3 fatty acids from flax, from walnuts, from even, you know, fatty fish. There's lots of different food sources for our, our omega-3s, all right? So to keep this really simple thus far, I'm trying to do cliff notes here, okay? So 
When we talk about seed oils, we want to look at the component of seed oils which has been vilified. And the component of seed oils which has been vilified is the omega-6 supposedly pro-inflammatory um, component of, of a, a seed oil. Okay? And seed oils do have a higher ratio of omega-6 fatty acids. Now, omega-6 fatty acids is basically linoleic acid. So let's take a look at some of the different seed oils to see that there's a, a varying percentage of linoleic acid of omega-6 in the different seed oils, ranging from very low to relatively high. And I've got my little crib sheet here. So flax would be on the lower side, which is 15 to 18% linoleic acid. Remember, omega-6 linoleic acid, okay? Uh, canola, 20%, soybean oil, 50 and then it goes up. I'm not gonna read them all out here. I'll, I'll put this below in the description. And then on the higher end is um, safflower oil, grapeseed oil and, and safflower oil, both seed oils which have over 70% linoleic acid, omega-6, okay? So, just so that we know, with our seed oils, some seed oils are lower in omega-6 and some are higher. Next up, does it mean that if some of the seed oils that are higher in omega-6, does this mean that, does it make them pro-inflammatory? Do they cause inflammation in the human body? This is what I want to discuss next, because this is really the, 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 the bottom line of this video. Before I get there, ratio. So you've probably heard already that the ratio is really important. So we need both, but the ratio is off in modern day eating. So the ratio should be close to four to one, four sixes to one three, okay? It, even better would be probably be, be three to one, two to one, three to one, four to one. That's really where we want to be in the race, ratio of what we consume in terms of sixes to threes. Right now, in a standard American diet, we are closer to 15 to one. And therein lies a big problem, which I will get to at the end of this video. All right, so now we understand what omega sixes are, what omega threes are. We understand that we need both we understand the ratio that we need to, to shoot for. We understand that omega-6s are largely comprised of linoleic acid. And when we're talking about seed oils, there is a lower end, flax, and there is the higher end, safflower, and what was the other one? Uh, Grapeseed tend to be on the higher end. Okay, so we know that, great. So then does that mean I have to avoid seed oils that are at the higher end of the scale. Are they inflammatory? Not necessarily so. In fact, this is really where we have to go to the science. And we have to go to the science looking at meta-analysis of randomized control trials that are well-designed. It always has to be a meta-analysis when you're reading science because one cherry-picked study is not going to cut it. So if anybody that you are listening to cherry picks one study or even cherry picks and easily skews a tiny piece of information from that one study, there's a, to try and make their case or make their point, there is a problem. It's super important that you know and understand how to read the science. Now, bottom line, I'm gonna bottom line it and cliff note it here. In all the science that has been done, the top tier science on humans, not animals, it has been found that omega-6s um, found in seed oils, regardless of the percentage, do not cause inflammation in human beings. That's it. In some cases, it can actually improve inflammatory markers. 
as is uh, tested obviously in blood serum, the main inflammatory marker being tested being CRP. And then there are many, many other inflammation markers that were tested again. Now, if you want to really delve into the science and really have somebody who can go through it with a tooth comb and explain it to you in so much mind-boggling detail, I am super impressed what he does, then you would want to look at Gill's video from Nutrition Made Simple, where he really unpacks the science. He's so good at reading the science, okay? So I have just told you right here that with all the research that I've done, both from Gill and many, many other sources, what I've come to is that in of themselves, um, even uh, seed oils that have a high percentage of linoleic acid and omega-6s do not cause inflammation or inflammatory markers to go up in humans in uh, top tier science studies, okay? But if you want to dig deeper, I will link to Gil's video in the description, okay? So maybe that's all you needed to know today. Okay, I don't have to worry, but wait a minute. Why did they get such a bad rap? Why are people freaking out like my friend? Well, there is a reason why. And the reason why is not necessarily these isolated oils. And some of these oils have even been shown to um, have benefits in terms of decreasing risk for cardiovascular disease. So, and also in some of the studies, uh, some of the inflammatory markers actually went down. They didn't go up. So some of them actually can be uh, beneficial. But where the whole seed oil thing I think has got a really bad rap is because of ultra processed foods. Because ultra processed foods uses a lot of seed oils. And here's an example, a peanut butter. Okay, so if you look at the label on this peanut butter, uh, to me, when I buy a peanut butter, it just needs to be peanuts and salt, that's it. On this label here, you're gonna see lots of other things such as sugar and whatnot, but you're going to see soybean oil. And soybean oil, in fact, there are two, there's palm oil, which is obviously a different topic here, but soybean oil is used liberally in ultra processed foods, everything from peanut butter to ketchups, to frozen meals, to breads, to pasta sauces, to candy, to um, baked goods, you name it. Why? Because it can extend shelf life of the product. And in the case of something like peanut butter, it gives it that sort of creamy mouthfeel. Okay. And so these low quality um, seed oils, such as soybean oil, um, are used across the board in ultra processed foods. But I want you to see that because we always want to look at the whole matrix of the whole food. It's not just the soybean oil in this peanut butter. It's the other ingredients. It's the sugar. Often sugar is the second ingredient. Okay, So it's never just that one thing. But if it, those who are eating a standard American diet full of, you know, pizza bases is another one, you know, that has all this crap in and all this junk in and it has the sugar and it has this, the whatever the seed oil might be. I mean, almost, I don't know, probably like 80% of products you pick up in the store. Look at the label. There's going to be some kind of oil and some kind of uh, sugar and, and uh, very high sodium. And so when we're eating these ultra processed foods, it's going to lead to ill health. It's going to lead to inflammation. It just will. Then couple that with a uh, diet that is very high in animal products, which is a dairy, very high in saturated fat. That's a sort of recipe for disaster, right? All this saturated fat that we now know it is indisputable, puts you at high risk for heart disease. And then all these processed foods, right? Just look at a pizza, that the pizza base has all the ultra processed, you know, highly refined starches and sugars and seed oils. And then on top of that, we've got this low quality dairy. I mean, you know, that, there it is, there's the problem. So I think that's why seed oils have got such a bad rap for the most part. Because anecdotally, when you hear people saying, oh, I cut out seed oils and I feel so much better, we also want to say, but what else did you cut out? Were you eating a 100% 
super, super healthy diet and the only thing you cut out was seed oils. And you went from feeling not good on this really healthy diet to feeling amazing because you cut out seed oils. I mean, that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And it is ridiculous because I think the thing that we really need to understand is that when we go on any kind of diet, it doesn't matter what the diet is, the diet, said diet, is going to say, cut out all processed and all junk foods. That's what kind of a sort of healthy diet, whether it's a good diet, a bad diet, a silly diet, they're all going to say that, cut out the crap, right? And when you do that, you're gonna feel better and you're probably initially gonna lose a little bit of weight as well. And then you get everybody jumping up and down going, this diet, this one, this one, this one, or seed oils, I cut them out. You know, this is the way to go. I feel amazing. Well, of course you're gonna feel amazing because look at what you've cut out. So I think it's really important to stay very level-headed and really understand this because otherwise we can fall into the trap of vilifying these foods that really don't need to be vilified. Like my friend, she didn't need to sit there in a very healthy restaurant and be terrified and freak out about a drop of seed oil going into her mouth because she believed, because of what she had heard, that it was going to just cause this massive fire of inflammation in her body. Not true. All right, so I really hope this has helped you. Finally, um, just a bigger note on oils in general. So as a board certified nutritionist, and I help women primarily who are over the age of 45 to get into optimal health, meaning to bring their biomarkers down, such as LDL cholesterol, A1C, triglycerides, etc. Those markers that can, through lifestyle and particularly through diet, can be significantly improved. And I help women to lose visceral fat and belly fat. So a lot of women say to me, well, are, you know, is oil healthy? Should we be eating oil? And what I always say is, if you take one particular oil, whether it's a seed oil or olive oil, I would say, well, okay, compared to what? Right? So are seed oils healthy? Well, compared to um, saturated fat or palm oil um, or uh, coconut oil, very, very high in saturated fat, um, are, are some seed oils uh, healthy? Probably yes, they're probably, they do have some heart healthy uh, benefits to them. But um, in terms of oils in general, I, I don't use a lot of oils. I use very few oils in my diet because another little nuance here with the seed oil argument is, oh my gosh, they're so highly processed, you know, the way that they're extracted and all the chemical solvents that are used, etc. And yeah, there's, there's that. There is that to consider. I don't use uh, oils because oils are highly caloric foods. They're very, very calorically dense, right? Nine calories per gram, as opposed to all your other micro, uh, macronutrients, excuse me, four calories per gram. So is it worth it? Is it worth it to eat these oils, whether a seed oil or an olive oil, an oiler is an oil, a fat is a fat, is it worth it? Are you getting the health benefits that you need from these refined oils that you might be able to get from whole food, plant-based sources that are calorically dilute, that are this really concentrated form of calories? And given the fact that most women that I work with want to release visceral fat, that's a very, very important distinction because we can get all of the nutrients we need, such as the antioxidants and the polyphenols, we can get all of those from whole food sources, healthy fats that we absolutely do need for our body, for our brain, from nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives. And in fact, we're going to get more of them without eating a food that is very calorically dense. Finally, olive oil. So extra virgin cold pressed olive oil has this health halo, doesn't it? It's like it's so healthy. It's part of the Mediterranean diet, etc. And again, if a client says to me, Sophie, you know, is it healthy? Or if you would say to me, is olive oil healthy? I would say, well, it depends on your health outcome. What do you want? So if your health outcome is that you want to release weight, belly fat, visceral fat, probably not the best 
choice. If your outcome is that you are at risk for cardiovascular disease and you want to bring your bad cholesterol down, your LDL cholesterol down, probably not the best choice. So if you want to do both those things, which most women who are postmenopausal actually do, they want their LDL cholesterol well below 100, and they want to reduce, if not eliminate, excess fat on their body, then if that's the outcome you want, then I would say olive, you're better off eating olives than olive oil. A very interesting study was done, and I will link to this underneath because I think it's one that you all need to know about. Dr. Monica Agarwal, who was a cardiologist, did a study. She works with cardiac patients, patients who are already at risk, higher risk for cardiovascular disease. And she was interested in testing whether olive oil could lower the LD, the bad cholesterol, which was obviously very concerning for them, or not. So she did a randomized control crossover study. All the participants ate a super, super healthy uh, whole food plant-based diet, but half of them were randomized to have four tablespoons of very high quality olive oil every single day, and 50% of them, zero oil. And the upshot and the results of this study was that those who did not have the oil significantly, it was statistically significant, reduced their bad cholesterol, their LDL cholesterol, I think it was about 30 points. I'm, don't quote me on this, I'd have to, uh, you'll have to look at the study. But, but enough to be statistically significant, meaning that it was you know, as, as much as a statin. And, and those who had the olive oil, the, 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 the marker didn't move. Um, so go look at that study if you're interested in that, because if you're somebody who thinks, well, my cholesterol's creeping up a little bit, I think you need to know about this. I think you need to really understand about this study, because what if you could take these foods, all of the oils, frankly, whether it's the seed oils or whether it's, you know, the healthy health halo olive oil, what if you could take all of those out and replace with whole healthy fats and get the health and the body outcome you want? So that's what I'm all about. So I hope you found that helpful. Again, you know, if you have questions, detailed questions, um, I would say before you ask me, if you're somebody nerdy like me and you really look at, want to look at the science, definitely look at Gil from Nutrition Made Simple. Definitely have a little look at his uh, video, his um, YouTube video, because he did a great, great job there, all right? So let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.